In this video, we're going to be enhancing our Dragonborn with new animations, little immersion boosting mods, and mods to give our character more freedom and depth. Let's first start with some new animations, starting with the extremely popular EVG Conditional Idols. This mod introduces a new range of animations that are context specific and only play during certain scenarios. For instance, there's the new Injured animations, which are triggered when your character's health drops below 50% as your character grips their body in pain. There's new Fatigued animations, which comes with two stages. The first stage triggers when your stamina falls below 50% and the second, more intense stage activates below 25% stamina. And for the animation relating to Magicka, the new headache animation triggers when a character's Magicka drops below 30%. Then there's the new cold animations, which activates when your character is outdoors in a blizzard or affected by any cold debuff in harsh conditions like in frostbite or survival mode. It's worth noting that NPCs will also use these animations and that vampires, nords, and children are exempt. So you don't see everyone in places like Windhelm and Winterhold constantly using them. For rainy weather, there's an animation specific to shield bearers. When you have a shield equipped and find yourself amidst the rainy weather, your character will use their shield as an impromptu cover. You can also see your followers doing the same thing. And lastly, the modesty animations are triggered when your character is not wearing any clothing, but with a thoughtful exception, as these animations won't activate whilst you're in a player home. As great as this mod is, there is one flaw, that these idols will only play if you don't have your weapons and spells drawn. However, to make EVG conditional idols even better, we'll now look at the EVG conditional idols extended. This add-on makes it so that all the new animations will play regardless of what weapon or spell you have equipped. So now you'll see your character clutching their stomach during combat as they get wounded, or put a hand to their head in pain once they've exhausted their magicka. Or if they completely run out of stamina, you'll see their posture worsen. And it doesn't leave out modesty animations. If your character is brazen enough to fight without armor, you'll see them covering themselves with one hand and trying to fight with the other. Again, these animations also extend to NPCs. So with the mod, you'll be able to see, even without a HUD, the state of the NPC's health, magicka, and stamina, regardless of what weapons they're using. Now for our next animation mod, we have the super fast get up stand up, also by Everglade, which replaces the extremely long standing up animation that plays when you get knocked off your feet, which in fast paced combat situations can feel like an eternity. Specifically, the mod makes the following changes. The original animation takes about 3 seconds to complete, but with the mod, it's now reduced to a swift 1.25 seconds. And the original animation for getting up when you're facing up is even longer, taking about 5.5 seconds. The mod cuts it down significantly to just 1.5 seconds to ensure that in the heat of the battle, your character isn't getting up like they're 80 years old. For a super simple animation, we have the third person dual wield animation fix, which makes it so that when you're dual wielding, you hold your weapons at your side, rather than holding the right handed weapon up in the air. I honestly consider this mod essential for any dual wielding character. The default dual wielding poses and moves created by Bethesda, I think are really unnatural and impractical. Now to give our animations more variance, we'll use Sonderbane's dynamic torch idle animations. This mod is all about bringing diversity and character to the simple action of holding a torch. The mod includes six new torch idle animations, with three variants that can be seen on both sexes and three exclusive female variants. Depending on the version of the mod you choose, the animations can change based on the type of outfit your character is wearing. You'll hold the torch differently if you're wearing heavy armor, light armor, or if you're not wearing any armor at all. Or if you don't want the custom animations per armor, you can just have it entirely randomized. And what's great about the mod is that these animations can also be seen in first person. But before we get onto our next mod, I'd just like to take a moment to thank the sponsor of this video, Enlisted. Enlisted is a free squad based shooter game for PC and consoles. You lead a team of AI soldiers in battles set in World War II against other players' squads. You can play as the USA, Germany, Soviet Union, or Japan, with over 400 different weapons, tanks, and aircrafts. You can choose your role in game, you could call in big artillery or bomber strikes as a radio operator, or you can do what I did and play as a sniper quick scoping people close range for the most historically accurate gameplay. For those who already know the game, Enlisted just got a big update. It adds research trees for weapons and vehicles, a new matchmaking system, and other gameplay improvements, all made with player input. So you can check out Enlisted's new era now. You can play it for free on PC, PlayStation or Xbox using my link in the pinned comment or video description to sign up. PC players, which I imagine is most of you, get a special bonus pack with two extra weapons, a helmet, 4,000 silver and three days of a premium account. It's only for a short time, so get it before it's gone. Now moving on, we have the True Directional Movement mod. This mod is a comprehensive third person overhaul with many great features, but let's just zoom in on one of its more subtle yet impactful components being head tracking. When in combat or in conversation, your character's head now naturally turns to face their current target or the person they're speaking with, instead of just staring straight ahead. And if you're not talking to anyone, your character's head subtly follows the direction of the camera, which really helps to make your character feel more alive and less like a robot. 
Now for an immersion mod, let's look at immersive interactions. A mod that brings your character to life with context aware animations for interacting with the world around you. I'm only going to show you some of the more common as well as just some of the cooler animations. Probably the animation that you'll be seeing most is the new pickup animations. The mod smartly detects the location of the items, adjusting the player's hand movement accordingly, whether reaching high or low. You can now pet dogs by pressing shift in the activate key, and you can also show your appreciation for the musical talent of Skyrim by again pressing the shift and activate key to applaud the bards after their performances. When interacting with shrines, your character can now perform a prayer animation, and if you're a thane of the Holdren, you'll receive the respect you deserve, as guards in the region will salute you, acknowledging your status. And when opening doors, a fast animation plays that doesn't hinder your movement. Additionally, there are special animations that let you activate with certain items. Your character can now pick up wood, with the amount depending on the size of the wood pile. When interacting with a keg, an animation shows the player filling a bottle with ale, and holding E near a practice dummy initiates a shadow boxing animation. This little warm-up gives you 10 extra stamina and health for 15 minutes. But maybe my favourite feature in the mod is that now when you wait, your character will sit or lie down. Now for our next mod, we have eating animations and sounds. This mod introduces exclusive eating animations and sounds for all the vanilla foods in Skyrim, which totals to 98 new animations for meals. The mod allows players to eat in a variety of situations. You can now munch on your favourite Skyrim delicacies while moving, sneaking, or even in the heat of combat. The transition to the eating animation was made to be smooth and natural, even if your character is in the midst of wielding a weapon. For those moments, when you're not in a rush, the mod offers animations for eating in a more civilized manner. You can use dishes and tables to enjoy your meal properly. Though if you're in a hurry, the mod even includes animations for dining while riding a horse. Next we have the Skyrim Souls mod, which simply unpauses the game menu so you can't freeze time on your whim. It makes activities like reading books, bartering with merchants, and sneakily lockpicking a door or container far more engaging. The unpaused game menus make combat scenarios far more difficult as well, as you can't just consume potions and food from the comfort of frozen time. If you think the mod adds too much difficulty, it can be configured to only slow down time within the menus, rather than just completely unfreeze it. Skyrim Souls is a mod I've used since I first downloaded it three years ago, and it's never leaving my load order. Next we have immersive equipment displays, which transforms the way equipment and special items are displayed on both the player and NPCs. Swords, axes, maces, daggers, staves, bows, crossbows, shields, torches, and even ammunition can all be displayed simultaneously, showcasing your arsenal in all its glory. But the mod's capabilities extend beyond weapons and armor. It brings to life the smaller, often overlooked items that add flavor to your journey, like having an Elder Scrolls strapped to your character's back, a potion belt vividly displaying your alchemical arsenal, or a gold pouch that changes in appearance based on how much gold you're carrying. Even quest items are included, with your character being able to display items like the Golden Claw, Arvax Skull, and the Dragonstone. And a bonus for the Bardic characters, the mod allows instruments like lutes and flutes to be visibly carried, enhancing the role-playing potential for playing as a bard. Now next up, we have Let Your Hair Down. This mod allows your character to have two distinct distinct hairstyles, one for when they let their hair down and another for when it's tied up. What makes this mod great is that you can set your character's hair to automatically change when entering specific locations like towns, inns or temples. And the mod even ties hair to gameplay effects. When your hair is up, you'll find enhanced combat abilities like being a better marksman and being better at sneaking. Though if you let your hair down, you'll be better at crafting and chanting and will have a slight bonus to your speech craft. Though if you don't like these changes, all of this can be turned off in the mod configuration menu. Now to add a little more depth to our characters, Pilgrim is a transformative addition to Skyrim that adds a true religion system to the game. It introduces a multitude of new deities, along with powerful shrine effects that can aid you as long as you're loyal to a chosen god. The benevolent deities and the malevolent deities work in slightly different ways. Following one of the nine divines or any other good-natured god will only grant you good effects. The mod also adds two new perks to the game, each embedded in different skill trees. The Pilgrim perk, found in the Restoration Tree, is associated with gods like the Divines, Auriel, and the Allmaker. On the other hand, the Cultus perk in the Conjuration Tree is linked with gods such as the Daedra, Manamarco, and Sithis. Both perks have two ranks, unlockable at levels 30 and 60 respectively. The first rank of the perk doubles the strength of the relevant shrine's effects. The second rank introduces an additional shrine bonus. For example, if you follow Debella, the default shrine effect is that you get a slight boost in your stamina, and the second bonus would be that you're completely immune to disease. Or if you follow Molag Ball, the first shrine effect is a slight bonus to your magicka pool, and that the second is that you cannot regenerate magic in combat, but you absorb 20 points of magicka per second from nearby enemies. Or if you follow Clavicus Vile, your buying and selling prices are 20% better, and as the additional effect, scrolls are twice as strong, and you find scrolls much more often, but your magicka is permanently depleted. Upon your first prayer at a shrine, you receive a lesser power called Prayer. This power enables you to meditate and receive blessings of the last shrine you visited. And now in each of the five major cities, one priest becomes a special vendor. These priests offer spell tomes, defensive items,
items like potions and scrolls, and the new scrolls are divine intervention. And if your restoration skill is expert or higher, you can buy a spell term to learn the spell for item free temple teleportation. Pilgrim also makes it so that shrines no longer cure diseases, as the new priestly vendors will stock extra potions of cure disease. The change is meant to encourage you to plan and stock up before embarking on long journeys. Whether you're a devout follower of the divines or a secretive worshipper of the Daedric Princes, this mod helps to add more complexity and depth to your character. Now for an immersion mod that changes your appearance, we have Pumping Iron. In this mod, every combat skill increase, be it melee, archery or even smithing, manifests itself in your character's appearance, as it increases your weight by a very slight amount for every time you level a skill. But the transformation doesn't happen instantly. Just like in real life, rest is crucial for growth. Your character's body will only develop after a good night's sleep. The amount of sleep varies. A normal training day might require 5-6 to six hours of rest, while an intense day of battle demands up to 10 hours. And there's a realistic cap on how much muscle growth can occur in a single night to ensure that the transformation feels organic and earned rather than instant and artificial. Now our next mod, Dirt and Blood, is great for two reasons. Every couple days on the road, every skirmish you have and every wound you collect subtly adds to the layers of dirt and blood that accumulate on your character. The mod handles these elements with a light touch. The visual effects of dirt and blood are mostly just that, visual. They won't drastically affect your gameplay, yet there is a clever nuance. If your character is particularly unkempt, you might notice a slight shift in how the world reacts to you, be it through making it so your character can intimidate easier when covered in blood or getting worse prices at merchant shops when you're particularly dirty. However, this mod isn't just about getting dirty, it's also about the organic ways of getting clean. A swim in the river, a walk through the rain, or even a deliberate wash. All these actions now carry the satisfying effect of cleaning your character. And once you are clean, you can expect to get a small discount from merchants for being so hygienic. Though it's not just you, NPCs too carry the marks of their lives in battles. You can now see bloodstains on bandits after a fight, or to find miners covered in dirt after a long day's work. It all helps to make Skyrim feel more real. The second feature that I like about Dirt and Blood is that your beard can now grow with time. Now this isn't implemented as seamlessly as the dirt accumulating on your character, but every few days you'll receive a facial hair token. This token can then be used to trim or grow or style your facial hair or just the hair on your head into something new. Now to give our character more freedom and not be forced into the role of Dragonborn immediately, we'll look at alternate perspective. This mod isn't just about skipping the original intro, it offers a rewritten version that keeps the essence of the main quest while providing a quick and engaging start to the game. Upon clicking new game, you'll start inside a room in Helgen's Inn. From here you can customize your character and choose your starting scenario. A little dragon in the room can tell you which options you can choose from. You could start as part of a vampire clan secluded in your lair, or as a member of the Force One and Druidac readout, or there's even an option to start the game at one of the four vanilla player homes, being Breeze Home, Proud Spire, Honeyside, or Vindral Hall and Markarth. Instead of completely bypassing the game's intro, Alternate Perspective offers a reimagined version. Before its destruction, Helgen is presented as a fully functional town, complete with an inn and shopkeeper. This change allows players to actually interact with the town folk, which I think makes the eventual destruction of the town a little bit more impactful. Now obviously before you've started the main quest there'll be no dragon menace, so now you can realistically do side quests without putting your duty to save the world on the back burner. To actually start the main quest, you simply need to rent a room in Helgen and sleep. This simple action triggers the beginning of the main storyline, and it's integrated in a seamless way. All in all, Alternate Perspective offers a nuanced approach to the game start, giving your character more freedom and freshening up the start of your adventure. Thanks again to Enlisted for sponsoring this video, remember you can play it for free on PC, PlayStation or Xbox, just use my link in the pinned comment or video description. As I said, if you're a new PC player, you get a bonus pack with several items, in-game money and premium account time. And that's everything for today. Thanks for watching this far and don't forget to endorse the mod you enjoy.